Let's now talk about the change management topic, yet another new addition to the SY701. Again, it was covered in the SY601 as a subtopic, but now in the SY701, it is a separate standalone topic. So what exactly is change management? Well, the objective of change management is to drastically uh, minimize the risk and impact a change can have on business operations, okay? So say for example, your company, you've been working with Windows 10, all right? All the applications installed, all the data flows, workflows, everything, everything's all on Windows 10. But now that Windows 11 has been uh, established, a lot of people are now using Windows 11, it's better than Windows 10, you now decide that, you know what, we're gonna upgrade uh, Windows 10 to Windows 11. Obviously, this can have some impact on the kinds of applications that are running. You might need to train users on the new features of Windows 11, things like that. So the whole point of change management in this kind of scenario will be to make sure that the transition from Windows 10 to Windows 11 will have as little impact as possible on the business operations. So we do have several components involved in the change management process. The first is going to be the prioritization alignment with business needs. This control, this change that we actually want to implement, is it aligned with the needs of our business? And then the impact analysis, the evaluation, okay, if we make this change, what will be the risks, what will be the benefits? And then testing, of course, you're gonna to have to test the change, okay? So regression and interoperability testing will be very, very important. Like for example, the applications running on Windows 10, will they run just as smoothly on Windows 11, things like that. And then roll back strategies, okay? This is very, very, very important because if the change fails, ideally you should be able to go back to the previous uh, control that you are working with. So if the upgrade to Windows 11 failed, then there should be a way how we can move back to Windows 10 safely. So accountability, all changes must be authorized, obviously, and then documentation, including diagrams and procedures. You want to make sure that the change is well documented because, for example, the, the following year you have a different uh, IT team, for example. So if there's a problem, the IT team should be able to look back on the previous team and see what did they actually do and then from there make the necessary changes. And then automation, baseline configuration scripts and code will be updated and then the actual implementation Shuttling, considering maintenance, windows, and acceptable uh, down time. These are the components involved in the change management process. And then we have four major or four different types of changes. You do have what is known as the standard change. A standard change will occur frequently, is low risk, and has pre-established procedure with documented tasks for completion. So for example, your typical uh, updates, patch management, those are standard changes, but then we have the normal change. It's not standard, but it's also not an emergency and it can be approved by the change control board. For example, maybe you want to change your anti-malware product. That's a normal change. It's not an emergency, but it's also not standard because you don't change your anti-malware uh, every week or every two weeks. Now you do have the major change, it may have significant financial implications and could be high risk. May require multiple levels of management approval, for example, the change to a new operating system. And then of course you do have the emergency change. This is one that must be assessed and implemented without prior authorization to quickly resolve uh, a major incident. So say for example, the server has gone down, you can pick it back up, what do you do? You may just have to switch to the backup server and you wanna do that as quickly as possible without any prior authorization. So this is typically like your change uh, control workflow. You may receive a request that, hey, we need to make a change to this anti-malware or this firewall, or we need to make a change to our security policy. Okay. You've received the request and then you test for feasibility. Can we actually implement this control? And then of course you want to identify rollback options. If we implement this control and it fails and there's a, a huge, uh, you know, uh, a huge problem, are we able to revert back to the previous state? And then of course you want to document whatever changes will occur with the change in control. You finalize the authorization, you determine the change windows, okay? And then you implement, verify, you update the change management baseline, and eventually 
you simply close and then archive the request. This is the workflow involved in your change control. Now, configuration management, you do have this thing known as the KPI, the key performance uh, indicators, the KPIs. These are business metrics used to measure performance in relation to strategic goals and objectives. So you do have three major components in it. You have the successful changes, obviously. The higher the successful changes, the better. But then you have a backlog of changes. These are changes that have not yet been completed and they should not grow over time. You want to keep the backlog to a minimum as possible. And then emergency changes. This obviously should not trend upwards either because if this is trending, then that means there's something obviously wrong with the security uh, setup. So that's it for the change management. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class.